Welcome to our talk on tag observability today. Actually, there we go. So today we're going to be talking about the some updates from observability tag. Uh, my name is Ken Finnegan. I'm an open telemetry architect at Lumigo, and I participate in the tag observability group. All right. Hi, everyone. Great to see you here. Thank you for joining. I'm Alolita Sharma. And I'm a TAG co-chair for the TAG Observability. Really uh, very happy to be here today uh, and looking forward to having a great discussion on some of the areas we'll be covering as part of this talk. I think people are still getting settled, so please join in. Don't go, you're in the right talk. <laughs> they're, they're playing musical chairs. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. All right, it takes quite a while to walk. So I think uh, we'll start very quickly with um, the observability tag and what its uh, charter is very, very briefly. Uh, and really, you know, uh, encourage you to join in. It's uh, open community discussion. And our mission as the technical advisory group is to work closely with the CNCF Technical Oversight Committee, which is the TOC, which looks at project health as well as project uh, features that are ongoing, as well as uh, what we do is foster, review, and grow the ecosystem of open source observability uh, across the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, identify and report gaps in the CNCF's ob uh, observability project portfolio, which is a very interesting area, and we'll talk a bit more about it as we uh, move on, uh, share patterns and good practices with users um, across the uh, spectrum, both from, and not only from enterprises, but medium businesses to individual developers, as well as vendors who are coming in and building and contributing to the projects that the CNCF has. Educating and informing users without bias, that is being vendor neutral, which is very important for the growth of open source and innovation in the open source ecosystem, especially in observability, which is really a very key part of infrastructure development. Um, having a vendor, vendor neutral venue for relevant thought validation, discussion, and project feedback. So, you know, if you're looking at areas where you are building out new technology or want to see the project, or really bouncing off ideas across distributed systems and engineering uh, towards observability and related areas. This is a great place to join in and discuss. Um, and then, you know, again, once discussions are past uh, um, initial phases, usually, you know, implementation is done on the projects. And last but not least, supporting the TOC um, for process improvements and project due diligence, right? So if you are uh, having a new project that is coming in into the CNCF space, typically in the observability domain, we look at, uh, you know, and have technical experts from across the industry who participate together for supporting sandbox incubation and graduation uh, steps and uh, helping the projects, you know, to, to move to the next stage. All right. So with that said, again, for those of you who don't uh, pay close attention to that huge landscape graph that we have in the CNCF, uh, which you can find at landscape.cncf.io, uh, this is the domain of observability projects in the CNCF space today, right? And I just call these out because they are different uh, projects, not only supporting metrics, but traces, logs, as well as, you know, Kubernetes instrumentation, um, collection, and visualization. So, you know, a whole uh, array of projects, including cost optimization, that is in this space. Um, three of these have graduated already, uh, which includes Prometheus, um, FluentD, and Jaeger. Um, and also you have six incubating projects with uh, Open Telemetry included. Open Telemetry is the second largest project in terms of contributions in the CNCF space right after Kubernetes, so big project. Uh, 10 sandbox projects and one archived, which is open tracing 
And open tracing, as you, many of you may know, already has kind of you know, merged a bit along with open census into open telemetry. Right? So the modern project today is open telemetry for that. So uh, why does that matter? And why does this, you know, this landscape matter? Is because, again, here we are, you know, we are interested in seeing a very healthy end-to-end uh, -end pipeline for observability, end-to-end, -end, you know, which includes instrumentation, collection, uh, analysis, visualization, as well as storage, right? And project health is a very important part of understanding and measuring that. So health metrics, for example, which is something that you know, we look at for each project and work with the TOC to be able to you know, uh, synchronize on that, include contributor growth, uh, maintainer diversity, so it, are there more than uh, mul are there multiple you know, contributors involved from different companies, especially, or different organizations? Uh, project velocity. What is the velocity at which the project is actually uh, getting contributions as well as being able to review contributions, you know, PRs as well as issues and discussions? And last but not least, a very important metric, which is user adoption. That is how, how viable is this pro project uh, from a user point of view? And is it sustainable? Um, so this goes back to the uh, core area, which many users ask, is that are these core technologies that are being developed in the open source space at risk? Are they you know, healthy or are they at risk? And you know, a couple of projects that come to mind in the last uh, uh, few years where the dynamics of contribution have changed significantly are Jaeger and Cortex. And Jaeger, as many of you know, is a core, core project in the tracing space. It has supported visualization for traces. It's supported storage as well as analysis to a large degree. And tracing has you know, been inherently a very key part of observability. So Jaeger's project health, if you go and look at the contributions that the project has had, over time, many of the maintainers have actually uh, gone and started contributing to open telemetry, for example. So they don't have enough time to be able to also contribute to Jaeger. And what that does is that fundamentally, even though you know, the large user community that has adopted Jaeger deeply and widely for tracing has been using Jaeger, but you know, what's the future? And that's an area that you know, the tag observability actually works very closely with its community as well as users and, and uh, contributors in the projects. And, and, uh, and, and Cortex is another example, which is a multi-tenant implementation of Prometheus for you know, multi-tenant and scalability. And Cortex also has had a similar situation where you know, original contributors on the project uh, moved on. And you know, again, there was at a point in time, uh, you know, a, few year, a couple of years ago, there was a gap in the uh, maintainership, if you will, for such a core project, you know, and industry uses these components deeply in the observability space, especially for cloud native infrastructure. So where to next, right? Um, the other areas that I'd like to call out in this uh, space, and you know, please feel free to uh, call out any other areas or gaps that you see. Uh, in the current CNCF project you know, landscape for observability is uh, missing core observability functionality to, as, such as a tracing store, right? Uh, again, I think that uh, we'd love to have some candidate projects that are open source and sit in the industry, such as Open Search, for example, that could be uh, leveraged as a logging store as well as tracing store. Uh, but would be great to have in the CNCF space. Similarly, UI and visualization is an, also another area that's you know, uh, kind of underrepresented, where you have uh, tracing UI that comes out of the box with uh, Jaeger, but then you have also other areas. You know, there's some 
uh, UI feature set with Prometheus, but you'd love to see you know, more sophisticated UIs and a whole visualization engine, including uh, leveraging analysis and, and intelligent analysis, especially for uh, observability. And uh, a couple of other areas which have actually become more and more prominent in this space are also cost tracking. There is one project called Open Cost that is in the CNCF space, as you saw in the previous slide. But we need more. There is room for you know, a lot more t innovation as well as improvements uh, in, the, uh, in the cost tracking uh, area of feature set, as well as standard querying. Right. So standardized querying, again, some work is happening in the spec space in the uh, tag which in one of our work groups, which uh, we'll be covering later. But, you know, again, there's room for other areas, you know, which can actually be added to the uh, observability project space in the CNCF. So with that said, again, are there other suggestions that you have for you know, gaps? Think about it. Please you know, call them out if you see other gaps in you know, feature set which you'd like to see in the CNCF. Moving on. Um, so I think at this point, I'll hand over to Ken to dive into the tag, tag activities, because he's been you know, deeply involved in uh, the work groups, driving some of the work groups, as well as others. So over to you. Ken. Thanks a lot, Alida. Uh, just before I get going on this, how many of you have actually attended a TAG observability session? Uh, a few of cool. you. Cool. Some of you have. It would be great <laughs> and fantastic over the next few months to see all of you attend at some point, just to get a sense of what we're talking about uh, every time we meet and to hopefully begin to contribute. And this is an example of some of the things you'll experience attending those talks. So we've had a lot of speaker series over the last year. Uh, we had a few maybe half a dozen in the previous year as well. We're definitely trying to get more speakers. So if you have a project that's of interest or something you're doing interesting with observability, please feel free to reach out to us on Slack and organize to come present. Uh, we'd love to have some user stories in the tag observability as well. Uh, so we had some sessions from Jonah Cowell on observability, Ryan Perry talking about uh, profiling, which is now part of Open Telemetry. Uh, we had VJ talking about eBay pivoting to Otel. Uh, Ryan White talking about uh, Quine and uh, graphs for observability. Uh, Philip talking about Thanos and its performance improvements. And then Matt coming and talking to us about open cost not that long ago. And continuing on with the success, uh, we had a few projects added to the sandbox in the last few months. Uh, there was KubeBurner and Logging Operator. Uh, they also presented to TAG Observability as well before they submitted to the Sandbox, just to give us a sense of whether it made sense to fit in the TAG Observability space. And we had a few projects promoted from Sandbox to incubating as well, uh, so Open Cost and Pixie. Uh, Pixie presented to us back in February. Uh, so if for anyone not familiar, that's like eBPF uh, Observability. And so some of the things we have in progress right now, uh, we have the Query Language Standardization Group, uh, which Chris uh, runs, and we'll have him uh, talk about more details shortly. There's the Observe K8s work group, which I'm a part of, and we'll talk about that some more in a second. We also have uh, collaborations with other tags at the CNCF. So we've been working with Tag Runtime for founding the AI work group, uh, which if you follow the Slack, you'll have seen uh, there's a new channel for that working group discussing what's going on there. And then Landscape Graph with Tag Security. Uh, so as projects evolve, or things evolve, the Tag is always looking to collaborate with other Tags at the CNCF to ensure that when there's that cross-cutting concern between different groups, that we're all on the same page about what the progress is, what the right thing to do is, and anything like that. Also, we spent some time working on an observability white paper for the last probably 18 months or so, I would say. Right. It, it uh, took a little while to get it finished, but it's kind of in a reasonable state now. Um, but please go read that draft and give us your thoughts on it. We want to make sure it's something that the end user community actually wants, and it's not something we're just 
thrown together in an ivory tower and everyone looks at it and goes, oh, that doesn't make any sense to me, I don't want to read that. So please take a look at it and let us know your feedback, uh, much appreciated. So the Observe Case work group, that's, the intent behind that is to develop best practices guidelines for how to set up and run observability for different use cases as well as providing a means for anyone not familiar with the observability realm to get a better understanding of observability by utilizing an application and seeing what it does in the various observability tools of the CNCF landscape. So right now we have a observability demo which, <coughs> excuse me, uh, builds on the OTEL demo and basically provides all the mechanisms you need to set up the CNCF projects for observing that application. So we have uh, instructions for GCP and AWS already there. Uh, we'd love to get contributions for uh, like Azure. Um, please come and contribute. We're in the process now of wanting to put together a website where we can host this information and start developing the content uh, and getting feedback from it and getting people looking at it. And with that, uh, Chris, if you want to come up and tell us about the query standardization. Hi, my name's Chris Larson. I work at Netflix right now. Um, I'm one of the co-chairs of the Query Language Standardization Working Group, along with VJ Samuel. And I just want to remind everybody that friends don't let friends create domain-specific languages. There are so many of them out there in the observability space that it's um, a real difficult challenge to work with different vendors and correlate your data. So we've started the working group kind of uh, taking on the impetus from OpenTelemetry, who's standardized ingestion. Now we want to see if we can standardize egress of observability data. So we've been working on the working group for uh, since KubeCon Europe, um, and we've had a lot of great presentations where we're gathering input from the designers from some of the big uh, DSLs out there for observability. We've had presentations from them, from the Google Monarch team, the Microsoft KQLM team, OpenSearch. Um, we have Prometheus coming up next week, actually. Um, and we have more, uh, more from uh, KX Systems as well. We're also working with the SQL Standards Group, um, and we have a lot more work to go. Um, we need your help to collect uh, use case stories around observability and more documentation about these languages that exist. Then hopefully at the end of um, this next quarter, Q1, we'll start actually discussing what we'd recommend as a standard that people could use for querying and interacting with observability data. So please join us. Our meetings are on the opposite Tuesdays of the TAG meeting. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. And now I'll hand it back to Alalita to talk about some of the future for observability. All right. So uh, I, as uh, Chris introduced gently, again, uh, query language uh, specification from an, a user's standpoint is super important, uh, simply because, as he said, you know, there are, every vendor has their definition of a query language today. And uh, there is a need from a user perspective of being able to hand, had a standardized query language, right? So with that said, again, I wanted to kind of go into what does the future of observability look like in terms of the short-term future, right? I mean, again, uh, we cannot, typically predict you know, beyond uh, the immediate to maybe three years from now. Um, and some of the areas that I'd like to call out that are you know, really, really picking up steam in the observability space uh, from, a observ uh, you know, from a vendor as well as a innovation perspective and contributions back to the projects themselves has been profiling, right? So many of you have been using uh, metrics, traces, as well as logs. Logs are as old as programming languages themselves. Um, and, and, you know, here you have uh, deeper data as well as wider, different types of data intersecting with uh, what we use for 
observability to get more granularity and understanding of the systems that we run, right, and the systems that we operate, infrastructure included. So profi profiling is actually a very, very hot space right now where there's a lot of multiple projects who have been working on eBPF implementations. Cilium is one of the projects that just recently graduated and uh, is supporting um, you know, profiling um, out of the box. Uh, similarly, Pixie is another project that we called out earlier. Uh, and there is also native uh, profiling support that is coming into open telemetry from an collection standpoint. Right? So that's exciting because you know, profiling instrumentation as well as collection is super important even to be able to analyze this at scale. The second area, which is, you know, again, uh, data collection, it continues to have a lot of velo velocity in the innovation that's happening in that space. Uh, open telemetry, as a shout out, just added profiling uh, as the fourth signal, if you will, for, uh, uh, you know, telemetry, uh, as well as semantic conventions, which are super important for guaranteeing interoperability uh, across different versions of you know, any software component. Uh, the elastic common schema, which has been you know, used forever in the logging space, uh, has also converged and has been donated by Elastic into the Open Telemetry project to actually land into you know, OTLP, right? Which is very significant for logging because that really converges an ad hoc you know, industry standard into a new standard that is coming into place for a new generation of applications and infrastructure, which is OTLP, uh, in long form also known as the Open Telemetry Protocol. Similarly, uh, cost optimization, again, is a very, very you know, fast-moving area, at least you know, from a user perspective, as you are building out and scaling out large-scale infrastructure as well as running global applications um, at, you know, uh, glo uh, at worldwide scale, um, it is super important to be very conscious of cost, right? And cost uh, instrumentation, definition of metrics, um, as well as, um, you know, different types of applications in the middleware also being instrumented in a standardized way is something which is super important for real-time analysis and being able to plan uh, and, and forecast. Um, I did do a talk on cost management yesterday, so you, if the recordings are available, please do catch up on it. And last but not least, in this space of cost optimization is also data management, because here we are you know, looking at another uh, area of metrics or other data that will be uh, instrumented from the infrastructure to be collected, analyzed, and then visualized, right? And, and so there is a new stream of data that is evolving here. Another very cool area that, you know, many of us are interested in or hearing about or working on uh, is AI observability. Now, this has been a term that's been, you know, in the, in the infrastructure and platform engineering space for a long time. Uh, similar, you know, you've heard of MLOps, and this is, you know, really the new incarnation of that, uh, which is AI ops. Uh, and what this does is that, you know, as we have more models being applied uh, in, uh, in uh, and especially large language models that are being applied, it really gives you the ability to combine, you know, standard observability analysis practices with the scale of computation on data and analysis on data that can be accelerated by leveraging AI uh, ops and AI models. So this space, as it evolves, will actually continue to transform the space of observability itself, because you are also introducing a new generation of assets that are being used by applications, which are the models themselves. And as you would observe code, as you would observe infrastructure, as you would observe you know, application performance, here you also have how do you observe the models, right? And, and this is another space which is super interesting. Watch out for a lot more 
you know, uh, work that, you know, we've, all the projects may be sharing in, the, in this coming year. And last but not least, uh, observability UIs, right? Again, this has been a huge area of innovation. Uh, there are many great projects in this space. Grafana is a well-known project that's used, you know, uh, Kibana, uh, open search dashboards, Jaeger. There are many, many different implementations of UIs even in the open source space today. But standardization is important, just as, you know, Chris highlighted query language standardization. Uh, makes it easier for us to be able to correlate data at the scale that you know, we look at data at. Uh, and, and UIs are the same way, right? It really helps you look at all different types of data that you're collecting from the infrastructure and applications to be able to visualize you know, together. Another area which is you know, related to this is really being able to not only build dashboards dynamically as code, some of that functionality exists today, but it'll continue to get more sophisticated because you have more data, and more types of data that are coming in into the space, as well as alerts based on that. Alerts is code, right? Because at the end of the day, if you're running a model and you do not predict behavior and you can see new transformations and different uh, states, you will have dynamic alerts also. And, and it really is that at the scale that you know, data is being collected, you also have that scale to measure for in analysis as well as visualization. So these are some of the areas, again, you know, in the tag that are discussed. A lot of the new innovators, both in the universities as well as in industry, and the open source you know, developers and engineers who are working in this space all get together in the tag, and it's a great way to kind of think through some of these areas and apply them in what we are building. So with that said, I think uh, we'll kind of take this, um, you know, um, as an example, but just, you know, this is one of the projects we've been working on uh, and in the, in the CNCF tag. And uh, we, again, have some contributors to the project uh, thank you, Matt, for uh, some of the work that you've done in this space. There are other contributors who have actually worked uh, on this project, but it's very interesting because it's really taking uh, the kind of uh, release process that, and release velocity uh, and understanding that across projects, right? So um, I think that these are hard to read, but we'll make yeah. available a, Slack, a link on Slack uh, if you're on the CNCF tag observability channel, again, uh, feel free to look out for this link. All right. So with that said, um, again, uh, did you want to? Can no, we, we can both. So basically, when Al's saying, please come help, um, we'd love to get everyone more involved because at the end of the day, the tag can only do so much without volunteers contributing their time and effort to help make these things happen. Uh, if we have three people doing things, then not a lot's going to happen. If we have 20 or 30 people helping out a little bit, then a lot more can happen. Uh, so definitely come along, participate in the discussions we have at the TAG, uh, share your interests, uh, any topics that you want to see the TAG discussing, um, comment on the issues we have in the GitHub repo for the TAG. Uh, if there's anything of interest there that you want to help out with, please shout and do so either through the issue or in Slack itself. Um, and our sessions are twice a month, first and third Tuesdays, um, 9 a.m. PST, uh, noon Eastern. Um, uh, there's links to the tag repository, the Slack, and the mailing list there. Um, but please come, say hi, contribute. Even if you just want to listen to start with, perfectly fine. I was a lurker for a while before I started doing things. Um, and I think I've been attending them for probably close to three years now, but probably that first year was me just listening in and getting to know people. That's totally fine. Yep, totally, totally. And, and everyone's welcome again. Even if you're interested in a topic, uh, you know, please just join in and say so. We'll go and find the uh, you know, folks who are actually working on this you know, in, the, in the larger ecosystem and invite them to come and speak. Um, and, and with that said, again, uh, did you want to dive in? 
Matt? Yeah, let's have uh, Matt come up and talk to us about areas. one of these, uh, the Kubernetes As resources a ontology. Again, uh, did you want to do a shout out for some of the projects? Hello, everybody. Um, so uh, we have a bit of a tradition uh, at KubeCon to talk about uh, sort of how in concrete terms can people engage. This is not an exhaustive list. This is actually just a top five or six. Um, so we do two things. We do that. Uh, and at the end, we also say, hey, we think people should think about these things. Last year, it was um, what's the shape of data uh, in observability and in general in cloud native? Uh, and what's that look like? Uh, this year, I'll have another one that builds on that. But I wanted to walk through a couple of the proposals uh, and in-flight work that people can engage with presently. Uh, and as, as was covered, if you identify as an end user or a project maintainer, or a contributor or some combination of those, <laughs> and you want to collaborate with some of the other folks that wear those hats, the tag is a place to do that. And top of my personal list is uh, an ontology for Kubernetes resources, generally. Uh, this gives us an organizing principle to structure data around. Uh, we want to uh, have a local uh, in-person meetup program. Uh, there are so many people that are entering this domain uh, because it's so relevant and important. Uh, and they are not all geographically in one place. So uh, if you like organizing parties and or meetups or nerdy uh, technical things, there's a program there for that. And it needs warm bodies and people who are passionate about it. Um, we have a proposed working group that this, the TOC will be expected to vote on sometime after KubeCon. There are details there. It's issue 1200, which is the bod of my first modem. Um, uh, the landscape was mentioned, and I'll get to that at the end. It's been paused for about 13 months for a very good reason, and I'm very excited uh, to tell you what's changed. Um, we mentioned collaboration. Uh, we have an ongoing uh, work stream defined uh, to work with the tag security, out of which a project called Guac happened, uh, which is now not going to be a CNCF project, but we will be collaborating with tag security to help with the data model for packages, CVEs, and things like that. Um, and lastly, there are labels. Uh, this is a small section uh, of those. Um, as to what to look for coming in the, in the, in the, in the coming year, uh, September 20th, a handful of weeks ago, is a special date for me. It's the date that I completed another lap around the sun. It's also when the GraphQL Foundation uh, had their yearly summit uh, that they just finished. Uh, one of the things that the landscape graph, which go check it out if you want to see it, uh, it defines as a, as a federated GraphQL uh, supergraph subgraph architecture. And there wasn't a clean, open, fully open way to do that this time last year. There were various offerings from all the major folks, uh, but they all kind of had a fly in the ointment that if you wanted to scale things up, there wasn't a fully open spec for how we federate. You know, you could do stitching, you know, you could do actual federation, you could do all, all manner of other things. Uh, but they're working and they just announced an actual spec. And secondly, uh, part of the direction they announced is for dynamic GraphQL schemas. So as we are trying to observe the world and describe it in ways that have good UX and are self-describing, um, GraphQL provides us a really nice way to do that. Uh, and to do that, we need to federate it. And so check it out. Uh, all the talks are online. Uh, it's not a CNCF thing, but everything in the CNCF needs to address and understand the shape of data and to query it and do stuff with it. Uh, so have a look. The last bit is around dynamic schema. So we think of GraphQL schemas as static, but as we build out platforms and APIs, all data is not in GraphQL. So as a thought experiment, right now today, a GraphQL Foundation project lets you federate OpenAPI to GraphQL. That means anything OpenAPI can be described pretty easily by GraphQL with good tooling. So stuff to think about in the coming year. Um, and again, I would encourage you to reach out to your friends, even if you don't come to a tag meeting and talk about this stuff. If you have ideas that you think should be done, that's how most of those things started. So you are more than welcome. Uh, first and third Tuesday. Thanks, man. Thanks. Thanks, man. All right. So with that said, I think we are under a minute, uh, and I'd like to at least have some questions, if possible. Uh, great shout out to you know, all the folks who have been participating in the TAG uh, meetings this year. 
uh, as well as the work groups and discussions that have been ongoing. Uh, so a huge thank you to all of the folks who have, you know, I've listed out, but also many more who actually have reviewed papers, reviewed, you know, some of the PRs, and continue to work on uh, many of the projects and work groups, uh, you know, uh, above and beyond these folks who are called out here. Uh, so with that said, again, happy to take a couple of questions. Um, do you have any questions? Anything you'd like to see the tag do more of? And while we're waiting for that, I'll just add that you can work towards having your name on that list for next KubeCon by attending tag meetings <laughs> and contributing to issues, et cetera. And we will be there in Paris, too, in March. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Uh, All right. Can I have a question? Yes. Any questions? Sure. Please go uh, ahead. Um, I wanted to ask you specifically, Alalita called out open search when talking about the gaps in CNCF landscape. Yes. Uh, can you share anything? Do you think uh, open search should be part of CNCF? Is it well, going to be? Uh, we've actually been, uh, you know, reaching out to the open search project and and uh, trying to figure out, you know, if they can actually, um, you know, again be within the CNCF. Uh, so, you know, again, ping me anytime. I'll keep you posted on updates. But nothing concrete yet. We are still trying to figure out, you know, the charter, the, the mandate. You know, how would they actually uh, be able to? Uh, you know, get contributions and more, you know, contributors involved uh, because it, it is such a large space, right? I mean, not only are you looking at uh, and a lot of dependency on Apache Lucene under the hood, but also, you know, very, very strong cross collaboration uh, and improvements on the elastic search layer, right? So, we'll de but thank you for the question. I'll definitely keep you guys posted. <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Matt Ray. I'm the community manager for OpenCost. And uh, it was nice to see that we graduated, apparently. <laughs> Moved in incubation. That's new. I don't think that's happened yet. No, I but, don't think so. But, did, but did it was on the that? slide, so it counts, right? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Maybe it was uh, not. But, but that, that's not my point. OK. Um, <laughs> Ex excellent, excellent. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> One of the things you were said you were looking for was more uh, general cloud costs. I just wanted to point out two weeks ago we added that feature. So Wonderful. We now cool. have access to all your bills. And so if anybody wants billing data, I'd be happy to get it to something better than what we have. Awesome. Uh, yeah, and we're going to be adding uh, carbon footprint soon. So. Fantastic. Cool. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Hi, Jacob. Hi. <laughs> Good to um, see you. Good to see you. Uh, thanks for all this. I'm like very excited about a standardized query language. Um, I have been thinking about you know sort of standardized dashboards and alerting for a while. Um, one of the problems with it comes with semantic convention and where the actual you know metrics and traces and logs and in what format they're in. Has there been any thought or? decisions around, you know, basing it off of OTEL semantic convention, given the merging of ECS into that as well? Yes, absolutely. Cool. In fact, you know, the objective is, again, to leverage existing work that's already ongoing uh, in the semantic convention space and, you know, extend that further. So totally. I mean, again, our purpose is not to reinvent. It really is to kind of yep. converge and reuse. Yeah, I really like the, you know, Grafana sort of shareable, like, dashboard JSONs and so, you know, the Prometheus rules alerting JSONs. Yes. Um, but, you know, there's sort of this incompatibility between that and OTEL yep. semantic convention. Um, and I'm looking forward to, like, those two things being able to converge. Yes, I um, totally agree. And which, also, you know, there are other interesting projects such as Persis, uh, which is also being used as, you know, a... And it's an evolving project, uh, not in the CNCF space yet, but uh, it would be interesting to actually get them more deeply involved uh, towards, you know, and that might help some of the convergence also. What's the name of that, sorry? Uh, P-E-R-S-E-S, -E -E -S. Persis. Cool, thank you. Sure, thanks, Jacob. All right, I think we are at time and beyond, yep. so thank you, everyone, Thanks for very much, in. everyone, for attending. Really appreciate it.